Okay, so to start with a, a little bit of background, the the feed-in tariff is is the, the latest government's way of paying people to generate renewable electricity at home. Yeah. Lots of other European countries have, have tried it as well. We've been quite slow on the uptake over here, experimenting with various forms of grant aid to start with, which never quite worked properly. So the idea of the feed-in tariff is you get paid for everything you generate, and then they encourage you to use what you've generated to save yourself money. So you've got what they've given you, plus the saving from using your own electricity. If you don't use it, they will then give you an extra 3p. The incentive is to use as much of the electricity as you've generated as possible, so that you, you maximise your saving. The basic system for, for a PV system is you have the panels, which are normally, on an average, properly located on the roof, because they're out of the way. From the panels, the electricity that's generated by the panels goes into an electronic box called an inverter, which turns it into mains electric. That electric then goes through a meter, so it measures how much it's generated. Then, after it's been through the meter, which is the critical bit, it goes into the house. So it's already been measured before it gets to your house. So what happens to it after that is up to you. If you can use it, then without without using extra electricity, if you can use it using things that you would normally use anyway, then you're saving money because you're not having to use that elect you're not having to buy that electricity. You've got everybody's got an electricity import meter, which is your standard electric meter which measures how much comes into the house. Now in order to measure how much goes out, you need an import-export meter. But they're not in a rush to give people who install PV import-export meters because from 2014, every meter in this country is going to be changed anyway to a smart meter. Basically, a smart meter will be able to measure what's going into the house, what's going out of the house, and it will be able to monitor it instantaneously. So your electricity company will actually be connected to your meter. So they know exactly what's going on and when it's going on. Yes, there is so, no so, story. So no using your washing machine at night because... In the old days, you would have run your... If you were on Economy 7, you ran your washing machine at night because it was so cheaper. now it's better to run now it Now it's actually day. cheaper to run it during the day. Right. On a sunny day. On a sunny day, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Have it, having solar electric means that you sort of start to rethink things that you've been doing. So you try and use things during the daytime to, to make the most of it. The, what we're generating at the moment would cover the background load of the house. And a, a way of finding out what the background load on your house is, if you're going away for a week or a weekend, is to read the meter before you go away and read it when you come back. Hmm. And what the house has used while you're away, if you divide it by the number of days, is your daily base load on the house. Then another way of doing it is there are a lot of these little plug-in electric monitors around nowadays. You could plug it in and it shows you what the house is using. The one thing to note about those is they are fairly crude devices. So they are measuring the current that's flowing by your meter. Now that's important because it doesn't know which way that current's flowing. <laughs> so if it's a bright sunny day and you've got very little on in the house, most of the electricity you're generating is being exported. So the energy monitor will show what you're exporting, not what you're importing. So the, the brighter the light, i.e. the clearer the sky, the better it works. So it will now that it's started raining, it will probably won't be generating as much as it was a few minutes ago because the clouds are probably thicker but it will still be generating something now on how much it generates obviously depends on how big a system you put in because pv systems are sized by the kilowatt so a, a typical size will be a two to two and a half kilowatts on a on a average house but you can have any you can have them installed at any size maybe from a kilowatt right up 
Now, as far as the feed-in tariff concerned, there are different bands. So they actually give you a bit less if you're putting it onto a house that's not been occupied. And if you install a system up to 4 kilowatts, you get 43.3p at the moment. When they launched it last year, it was 41.3, but it's index linked. So it, it, it gets adjusted each spring in line with inflation. And there's going to be a built-in decrement on it from next, from next April. So, but that only affects new installations. Once your system's installed, you get that rate. If somebody installs a system this time next year, they all get a lower rate than you. Well, they, they say it's guaranteed for 25 years, and it's not costing... It's, the money is not coming from the government. Yeah. All the, go the electricity supply companies in the country have to put money into a central pot. The amount they pay is based on the number of customers they have. And then, once a quarter, your electricity company will ask you for a meter reading from your generation meter. You send that meter reading to them. All the meter readings get sent in. And then the money in this central pot then gets passed back to the companies that want it. So you get paid quarterly. You get paid quarterly and it will be paid direct into your bank. Have you, have you done any calculations as to what the payback period is? The cost of installing the systems, when, our, when we installed ours seven years ago, we used to, you, were, you were looking at a, about six and a half to seven thousand pounds for each kilowatt that was installed. Since the, since the feed-in tariff was launched, that there have been over 30,000 installations registered with the feed-in tariff in the last 18 months. 28,000 of those were PV. There's been a few hydro and a few other things. So the market has grown enormously in that very short period of time. And now the costs have dropped by about, on average, 50% from where we're now looking at 3,000 to 4,000 a kilowatt installed as opposed to sort of six and a half to seven. And obviously the bigger the system you install, the more discount you get. So a two kilowatt system, you're looking at sort of probably seven and a half to 8,000 for an e a, a standard installation. Kilowatt and average, average for a house, you're looking at two to two and a half kilowatts is what the normal roof would take. Right. So you're looking at probably sort of about eight thousand right. pounds ish. Uh, and how, what... So, so in terms of the payback, based on the current prices that people are paying, you're, you're looking at someone in a region of nine to ten years on a cost payback. There will be a review in March, and the rumours in the industry are it's it it won't be the seven percent reduction. It'll be nearer twenty five to thirty to get it back down to the eight percent return on investment again. Which is still quite good. It's better than having the money in the bank at the moment. Because you're only getting a couple of percent if you're lucky. <laughs> but it's nowhere near as good as it is at the moment. Which is getting on sort of between 10 and 12%. Depending on what you get your quote for. When the feed-in tariff started, they stopped all the capital grants. Right. Because it's, it's a different way of doing it. Instead of giving you the money to install it and then saying, okay, you've installed it. Okay. It's we're now saying... Now. You install it at your own cost, sure. then we will pay you for what it generates. Right. But the, what we pay you will get your money back <coughs> in eight to ten years at the moment. Okay. If, if, you're, if, you're use, yeah, yeah, if you're using the electricity you've generated, yeah. they've already paid you for it well, because you've generated it. They're going to pay you the 43p. They get the 43p from the generation meter, yeah. which is measured before it gets to the house. Okay. Then once it's got to the house, if you then use it yourself, yeah. you've saved having to buy that electricity. Okay, and you're still getting paid for it. You've got paid yeah. for it anyway. Okay. Yeah. And then you're getting it free. Yeah, that's that's the bit that some well. people find trouble getting their head around is they okay. paid for it yeah. they paid you anyway. <laughs> Whatever happens, you've got that forty three point three P in the bag.
Okay, so, so um, only if you can kind of arrange your system so that so you're heating your up your hot water for your heating or doing various other things during the day when, exactly. when you're getting all of that generation for free and you take yeah. over during the day. That free. helps to reduce your fuel bill further. So yes. you only okay. pay for what you have to buy in when you're not generating yeah. anything at all. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing you pay for. Yeah. If, if, for example, this house was generating a kilowatt and I stuck the kettle on, mm. that's a two kilowatt load on the house because right. kettles are quite energy hungry. So one kilowatt would come from my system and I'd have to buy in the other kilowatt. Yeah. But the things to look at, A, the orientation, but anywhere basically between east and west is not a problem. <laughs> of, the, of the annual generation amount, 75% of what you get is generated in roughly six months of the year. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of winter when the sun's very low in the sky, you're not going to get very much out of it. What's the sort of lifetime of panels? Do they, need, do they wear out or stop working after some time? Typ typically, the manufacturers these days quote that they give a guarantee of within... 20 or 25 years, they will be producing 90% of their output. Unless something goes wrong with it, it won't just stop because there's no, there's nothing, there's no moving parts in there. It's, it's just a solid state thing. So if if they, if you have a shunt, when you've got a string of panels set up, if one of them gets covered, then it 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 kills the output for the whole string pretty much. So shading is quite an important thing to think about. You can and, and do you think the technology is still advancing at such a rate that actually they would have been superseded by something more efficient within a short number of years? The, you know, we're all busy yeah. installing these things on roofs, and are yeah. they actually going to be, you know, defunct, really? No, no. The, the panels we installed seven years ago, if you go back to the same manufacturer for the same physical size panel, ours were 180 watts, they're now 210. Mm. So they have improved for the same physical size. If you get a slightly bigger panel, obviously you can get more out of it. It's, they're gradually making them more efficient by playing around with how, how they were, how they're, how they're formed and, and, and how much the different coatings they can put on them and stuff so it's there is an evolution there but if you install it now you're not going to find that they produce something twice as efficient next year and anyway if you're going to claim the feeding tariff if you install this year you get the 43 and a half p if you install it next year you'll get whatever it drops down to Lots of because the feed-in tariff is so lucrative, yeah. a lot of companies have jumped onto the bandwagon of, here, we'll give you a free system. You can use the electricity. And it's completely free electricity to you, but we'll take all the feed-in tariff. Yeah. Right. Mm. So it costs them £10,000 to put the system in. You get... Depends on how frugal you are with electricity in the first place and how much you can actually make use of that free electricity. So you could save maybe sort of 50 quid. They, they generally quote 200, 250 quid a year is what you're going to save on your electric bill. Then they stand to make £30,000 out of their £10,000 investment. And they haven't paid you anything for renting your roof. And you will find quite often... There's things, I've, I've actually seen a few of the terms and conditions of some of these. Because we get a lot of people asking about, because where I work, we're just an advice service. We don't install anything. We just give impartial advice. So people send us stuff to read through and then we'll, we give our own opinion on it. One of them actually stated that, that you had to stay <coughs> with them for your electricity <coughs> supplier for the 25 years. <laughs> then they would give you the panels. If you want to go down that route, because you want the, the panels, but you don't want to pay for them, just read the small terms and conditions very carefully. Otherwise, you may end up paying for them anyway. The cheapest way to keep your house warm is to have insulation, which stops the heat leaking out in the first place.